Uh, so for each paper, we'll have a 15 minute presentation and about four minutes for questions and answers. We'll then have one minute where you can return to the lobby and if you like, you can switch to the other concurrent paper session in building two. Um, if you wanna watch all three of our presentations in building one, you don't have to do anything during that minute. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Grace Gottlieb from University College London, who will present her talk titled, Online Training and Badges to Incentivize Transparent and Reproducible Research. So Grace, you can, yeah, there you go. You can take it away and everyone else feel free to put your questions in the Q&A. Hi, Hannah, thanks very much. I'm going to share my uh, slides now and please can someone let me know if it doesn't work for whatever reason. So yes, as Hannah said, I'm Grace Gottlieb from University College London in the UK. And I'm here to talk to you today about an initiative at UCL, my university, uh, which involves both a training course and badge system to incentivize transparency in research. So before I tell you about this initiative, um, I'm going to explain what we what we understand transparency in research to mean. And this is a definition that we use at UCL. So research is transparent if the methods, analysis and data are reported and disseminated openly, clearly and comprehensively. And what that really means is ensuring that um, as well as being open about the methods you've used, there are other initi uh, initiatives you can take, such as pre-registering your study or sharing your data. I'm sure these are all activities that you're, that you're familiar with, uh, but the question is how to encourage these. And going back to uh, some themes that came through in, in Brian Nosek's talk, you know, there are a number of barriers to transparency in research, uh, one of which is variable awareness. And there are some people who are very enthusiastic about the importance of, of research being transparent and reproducible, and I'm sure many of the people at this conference would, would count themselves in that group. Uh, but there are also people who uh, may not have come across it, may not have been inspired by it, and uh, might be focused on other things, and there isn't necessarily always a systematic way to ensure that awareness is high among, amongst different communities. So that's one of the, the key barriers. A second key barrier is the lack of incentives. And this is, it might be, you know, people who are really enthusiastic about this topic that they, they work hard to pre-register their studies and um, make their data open, et cetera. But for people who may not be that enthusiastic about it and willing to put the time in, you know, there isn't always a huge amount of incentives to encourage them to do that. And that goes back to things like um, promotion criteria and the things people are rewarded for in, in the papers they publish, et cetera. So this initiative at UCL really seeks to counter both of those barriers. Um, and, and the way, we intend to do that is through a two-pronged approach. The first involving uh, this online training course in transparency and reproducibility and research. And, you know, as many training courses really intend to, its, it's intention is to raise awareness and understanding of what it actually means to make one's research transparent and reproducible. You know, what are the, what are the steps you can take to achieve that? And almost more importantly, why is that important? And, and why is it something that our university is prioritizing. And to complement that, uh, we're planning to roll out a badge system whereby people who carry out this course online uh, get to use a badge either on their profile or uh, email signature. And that badge symbolizes the fact that they've completed this online course and that they are committing to the principles in the course um, and committing to making their research transparent. So this badge is intended to uh, incentivize transparency because by giving people recognition, um, that can encourage them to actually act on the things that they've learned in the course. So, so these two prongs, the training course and the badge are intended to work together to counter those two barriers that, that I mentioned earlier. I want to go into a little bit of detail about what this training course actually um, involves or how it was set up. And it consists of two components. The main training content is an animated video. Uh, and this was based on the statement on transparency and research that we developed over quite a long time and finalized and published in November, 2019. 
And this statement sets out the expectations that UCL has for researchers in terms of what they should be doing to make their research transparent and where, where appropriate reproducible. So I, I really think it was great that we published this statement and I think it, it sends a clear signal that, that we're developing policies that, um, that are intended to, to relate to um, people across multiple disciplines and, and is a sign that the university is prioritizing this work. But I was also very conscious when we published it that there might be greater potential to uh, translate these messages into a training course that would be more engaging and more inspiring than just reading some uh, pieces of paper. So I've been working uh, for the last six months with a graphic designer and animator to take the concepts in the, in the statement and adapt them to create an animation, which is, is about half an hour long. Um, and it goes through all those key concepts, but um, is intended to be a more engaging way of, of delivering that material so that, that people hopefully feel inspired. And in addition to those uh, key topics covered in the statement, there are also dilemma scenarios that are intended to bring the concepts to life. And the idea here is, you know, while you might agree in theory or in principle that it's important to publish your null findings, um, if you're presented with a scenario where actually it's a bit more tricky and you might be being advised against doing so, how would you actually deal with that situation? And, and that's really the intention of these dilemma scenarios. It's to get you imagining in the context of your research what you would do in a situation like that and how you might navigate the various challenges in order to ensure that your research does end up being transparent. And those scenarios, um, the dilemma scenarios are, are sort of designed to cover most, most disciplines or at least be relevant to most disciplines so that there's at least one dilemma in there um, for the discipline of whoever might be watching it because we were really keen that this course would be as inclusive as possible and and mean that anyone could engage with it. The second component of the training course is uh, some accompanying videos of role models. And these role models, um, some of them are early career researchers with whom you know, people taking the training course might be able to relate to uh, better. And some of them are um, more senior academics. One actually is Brian Nosek, he kindly recorded a, um, a video for our course. And the purpose of these videos is, is for these academics and researchers to talk about, um, you know, why they're interested in this area, what got them interested in the first place, what they're doing, what activities are going on. Um, and, and hopefully they can act as role models for people who are doing this course to see, OK, these are people who you know, are doing well in their careers and they're really signing up to these principles and um, hopefully admire them and, and, and see them as, as role models. So that's, that's how the course is, um, is developed. It's all online, as I, as I said. And to accompany the course, as I mentioned earlier, is this, um, this badge to recognize people who have, who have done the course, they get to use um, a badge on their profile or email signature. And this badge idea is inspired by the use of open science badges, uh, which Brian Nosek covered earlier, uh, which is very helpful. Uh, so essentially, as Brian mentioned, these badges um, are used in the context of specific papers being published. So if you publish your paper in a journal, I believe over 60 journals uh, offer these badges. And, and so if you publish your paper and you've also made your data open or you've pre-registered your study or made your materials open, then you, you get to have a badge associated with that paper. Um, and the idea for the UCL initiative is really inspired by these open science badges. Um, but instead of having it specifically related to a piece of research, uh, we wanted to have a badge system whereby uh, anyone across disciplines could, could take part and could get one of these badges. And, and we wanted it to be an institutional badge rather than specific to a publication. So the idea really is that anyone can do the training course and then get this badge. And the badge can act as a, as a bit of a symbol of um, this movement towards greater research transparency. So the way it will actually work is that, um, you know, the course will be advertised, people will get to complete the course online. And then once they've completed it, they'll be given the opportunity to register to use this badge. Um, and then they can use it on their email signature, on their profile. 
Uh, and the badge will be hyperlinked to a web page that really explains what this agenda is all about, what the badge symbolizes. So the hope really is that these two, um, in, well, these two components of the initiative can work together to promote a virtuous circle. Uh, so we begin with the training course and the people carry out the training course that will allow them to use this badge. Um, and then they can display it on their profiles and applications. And hopefully that will give them recognition uh, for the fact that they've, they've done this training course and, and they're committing to the principles within it. Um, and it will also hopefully raise awareness among others. If you, for example, saw on your colleague's email signature that they had this badge and you clicked on it, you know, you would find out more about this agenda. And hopefully that will inspire people, other people who haven't done the course to, to get involved um, and to do the training course themselves uh, because they know they'll get to use this badge and become part of this movement. So as you can see here, this is the intention to create this virtuous circle that can hopefully promote um, a change in norms and a change in culture. And this idea, the idea for this initiative is based on the COMBI framework for behavior change, which you can see the core components of here. So at the top, we have uh, capability. Well, well, actually the three on the left, so capability, motivation, and opportunity are all needed in order to influence a behavior. And I'll give an example here with the, um, with the initiative. Uh, so the idea really is that you firstly have to be capable of making a, of making a change to your behavior. You have to be aware of it. Uh, you have to be physically, mentally capable of, of making that change. And the training course really intends to improve researchers' capability, um, their knowledge, their awareness, their capacity to actually implement these changes to their behavior as researchers. And secondly, the training has a number of, um, has a lot of signposting within it to tools that can facilitate making your research more transparent. So in so doing, the training intends to improve researchers' capability and opportunity to uh, change their research behaviors to become more transparent. And finally, the badge acts as an incentive to encourage people to put into practice what they've learned and then hopefully encourage others to do the training course and start off to start off with. Um, so that acts on that third element there, the motivation. So the intention here is that those two components together can work together to promote behavior change. In terms of next steps, I'm very keen to take this opportunity of rolling out this training course now that it's uh, on the cusp of being finalized and, um, and the badge system in the context of a randomized trial so that we can understand to what extent the, uh, the training course is actually changing people's attitudes to start off with um, and secondly, their behaviors and to what extent the badge actually makes a difference. So the plan is really to um, recruit people to take part in this pilot and some of them will get to do the training course uh, and some will get to do the badge, but not all get to use the badge, but not all. Um, and in so doing, we're hoping that we'll be able to, to identify the impact of these initiatives. Because there, there's a lot of, there are a lot of efforts in this space and, and I'm really keen that we can use this opportunity as a way to, uh, to add to the existing evidence base in this space and to learn what really works to promote transparent research practices. Finally, looking to the future, uh, we're keen to grow this initiative and I've been in discussions with the UK Reproducibility Network, which is a network of, I believe, 17 or so institutions across the UK who have committed to, um, to promoting reproducibility within their institutions. And the network goes much more widely on a, on a lower commitment level as well, uh, where there are lots of local network leads within a broader range of institutions. Uh, so this network is really intending to promote positive behavior change in the direction of openness, transparency, and reproducibility. Um, and what we're hoping is that after we complete this UCL pilot of the training and, and badge system, that we can then roll it out more widely across UKRM institutions. And I'm really hoping that whatever we learn in the UCL pilot, we'll be able to um, to apply to a wider rollout so that we can uh, learn, learn even more and answer any questions that have come up in, in the initial pilot. 
Uh, so I'm very excited about this and uh, keen to start on the implementation. Um, I'm aware that there are a lot of things in this space in the context of using badges, and I think it's, it's a very exciting opportunity to, to test the impact of these incentive systems. Um, so I'm going to finish there, and I'd be really happy to take any questions or hear from anyone who's interested in hearing more about, about what I'm doing or, or tell me about what you're working on. So thank you very much. Thank you for, for sharing your project. Uh, we do have several questions in the Q&A, so I'm just going to do them in the order of the votes. So the first one is for the pilot, will you be working with researchers that are already familiar with reproducible practices or will they be novices? So our, our, our target audience will really be PhD students and master's students who are really at the start of, of their journey. Um, and they may well have had some exposure, um, but the real intention there is to catch people early before they develop formed habits and, um, and hopefully encourage them to, to, to be inspired by this movement and, and then really set up their processes for collecting data and publishing in a way that's in line with this, with this movement. Great. I think we are about to run out of time ask one more question which came early so might have already been answered by your presentation but are the badges will the badges be checked in some way was the question so the plan is to ensure that every anyone who uses the badge uh, will have to register in order to use it so we can keep track of of who's actually using it i think in the context of the pilot it might be a bit more um rigorous in terms of we'll only be allowing certain people to use it in the first place. So it will be very controlled, but in the context of rolling it out uh, in the wild, so to speak, I think it would make sense to have a register to make sure that we can see uh, who's actually signing up to use it. Okay, so short, short talk. So we're already out of time again. And you know, y'all might want to follow up with Grace at one of the tables later when we're on a break, if you have a follow up. Sure. Um, and so we do, we are going to our one minute now where if you want to switch rooms, you can. So we'll pop out of this mode for a minute. If you don't want to switch rooms, just stay right here and we'll be right back in a minute. So thank you. Thank you, Hannah.